welcome to the A. Richard Newton Distinguished Innovator Lecture Series. Um, I said this a little bit earlier, and I'm just going to repeat myself. We're starting to wind down uh, in the semester, and we have, including tonight, three incredible keynotes planned for you all. Uh, next week, we'll have somebody from Tesla joining us, and, and then you'll have a week off for Thanksgiving. I hope you can take advantage of that. And then our last class is, I believe, on the 30th of November. I actually have to look at the old-fashioned calendar. It is, uh, and that's um, a gentleman who founded Box will be joining us. Um, one thing that we try to do if we uh, have the opportunity every semester is have somebody join us who talks a little bit about what could be important to you all as you're starting your careers. And it just so happens tonight that we are able to do two things. Have somebody who can give you some insights as you're starting your careers and things that are helpful. And also two founders. Uh, there's nothing I like better than uh, basically uh, addressing two objectives in one. So um, with that, I'd also like to introduce Dean Evan Variano, who has joined us um, and our speakers would not be here today if it were not for him. Evan, would you give us a little background about yourself? Uh, we have a lot of engineers out there in the audience, but it'd be great to hear about you and also our speakers tonight. Thank you very much. I'm so happy to be here and, and welcome to all of you. Thanks for, thanks for giving us your attention for the next few minutes. Um, I came to UC Berkeley after finishing um, my degree at Cornell University, where I studied civil and environmental engineering. And that was really fun for me because I had spent about a decade looking for a field that really felt like a good fit. I tried a number of things and civil and environmental engineering was the one for me, um, as evidenced by the fact that I've been able to get some career success um, here. I measure that success by how the students do um, my students seem to have been satisfied, um, but they also share with me that which they're looking for. So when I first uh, met Elisa and Lynn, it was because I saw an ad that they had arranged. I believe it was on BART, actually. I, had, I did not know where they were or who they were. I just saw some of the product they had created, and I said, wow, this is something we're missing. And I reached out to them and saying, I love what you're doing. Maybe I can support you. So that's uh, sort of where this relationship began. I guess I should say what it was that caught me. I remember seeing a picture of someone and a simple line underneath it. I look like a civil engineer. And I thought that was really powerful. Now their org has grown and evolved since then. Um, they're not just putting up pictures that say, I look like a civil engineer. They're doing so much more now, but that's where our relationship began. Fantastic. I I, I love that. Um, and I had had the opportunity to talk to Evan because he introduced actually the college to Fable, which is a reading program. And I thought that was so fascinating that an engineer was promoting reading. And when we talked, he told me about this new company uh, that I think was in the foundry at the time, because that's also where you can uh, incubate and even accelerate uh, to some extent. For all of you that don't know, the foundry is in is part of Citrus uh, in the College of Engineering. Um, and what was interesting, I thought, was uh, when I understood about Repicture, which is the company that Elisa and Lynn have uh, founded, um, was that they, I thought, um, kind of had pictures of different structures, architecture, and you could see a little bit about who was responsible for building. Um, when we talked about a week ago, I realized that they completely pivoted from that idea, and that's something that's actually a benefit to us. Uh, last week, we heard uh, Edris um, Bramanian talk about pivoting from being a, a B2C company to a C2C, and it'll be interesting to hear how you all uh, talk, talk about pivoting. We're going to do today a little bit differently. Uh, usually, I put up uh, um, the timeline for you all, and I'll go ahead and do a quick share. Um, but we'll do that toward the end. I think it's so fascinating to kind of understand where you all right, are right now and what you're doing that's helpful for the students. And maybe to that end, we'll actually start with something a little interactive. So the 166 of you out there, get your fingers ready because we're going to ask some questions. Uh, let me go ahead and share my screen. Um, and actually, before I even do that, Elisa and Lynn, you've both been so quiet. Do you want to say hi and just a, a quick introduction? Sure. Lynn, do you want to go? 
first? Sure, sure. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, so hi, Lynn Mayo. I am CEO of, of Repicture. We're really excited to be here. We, um, Elisa and I are both uh, civil engineers that have been on a, a long journey. Um, Evan talked about how we started this journey many years ago and, and really excited to kind of talk to you about kind of the journey and the path that, that we've been, been taking. So really happy to be here and, and um, excited to, to have this conversation. Fantastic. All right, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And uh, this is a little bit about you all in the audience. Um, wanted to ask you all a question. Uh, I'll poll, I'll put it up in just a minute. Um, but actually, Lynn, I'm going to ask you all to take turns reading the poll question. And, and then I'll go ahead and pull up the poll while you're doing that. Sure. So I'll, I'll start with the first question. And um, you're going to find out we're all about career paths and helping people with, with careers. So we were kind of interested in just here. What would you say is your likely career path? Are you interested in going into to finance, education, STEM, um, software, hardware, retail, fashion, health, medicine, agriculture, legal, or something else? Um, kind of interested just to hear what what people are thinking right now in their or in their career. We're about uh, half of you have answered. I'm going to wait about 10 more seconds, and then I'll go ahead and end the poll, and I'll share with everyone. And here we go. Let me share those results. I hope everybody can see. I'm not sure if the panelists can see, um, but STEM, software, hardware, which are basically kind of redundant, um, my fault. Uh, but those are the big ones. So I think that's kind of interesting. Um, I don't know if you have any thoughts about that. Are you surprised? Are, you, are any of you surprised looking at those results? Yeah, I think, it, I think it's great actually, first of all, to have that wide variety. I think with an entrepreneur class like we have, you're having, um, it probably makes somewhat sense to have a number of people in finance. Really excited, a lot of you involved in STEM and the hardware software, which is actually a subset of STEM. Um, so, so I think it's kind of in, in lines, I think with what a lot of entrepreneurs are looking for. Um, but I think what's also interesting is things like education and agriculture and later, uh, legal, all those often relate to STEM. Um, so it's not always kind of a clear one-on-one, one -on -one, but kind of happy to see, um, was that 30, 30% interest in yeah. STEM? Um, that's great. Um, well, let's keep that in mind as we continue and I'll go ahead and go to the next question. And Elisa, would you mind asking it? Sure, so um, our second question, we'd love to know, have you had an internship a job or a volunteer position in the area that you're interested in? One of the themes that we've had this semester, um, if in case no one does, if you don't feel like you've been hit over the head, I feel like we have been, that you really need to do an internship, ideally in the area that you're interested in. And if it's in new venture, uh, then instead of doing a startup immediately, maybe you work for a startup first. And uh, we've got about 70% of the answers. I'm gonna go ahead and end the poll and share the results. Wow, that, that is actually great that you got 60% and have been able to get an internship, that's fantastic. That's really uh, impressive. <laughs> we'll talk about both of your backgrounds a little bit, but um, Elisa and Lynn, I can't remember if you all did have an internship in an area you thought you were interested in. I, I did not. Yeah, I and, kind of did, but yeah. I, I mean, I did like some extracurricular stuff at school. It was sort of like a job slash helping a, a, a grad student with their research project kind of a thing. And I think that did help, help me when I went, went out to get a job. Fantastic. Evan, you have such a different path. Uh, what about you? You know, I really appreciated my internships because um, one by one, they showed me what I didn't want to do. And it was only while commuting to an internship that I stumbled upon what I did want to do. So uh, I'm glad I wasn't just sitting in my house worrying, just getting out there to a dud, put me in the right place to find the winner. So I, I, I know you didn't think you were going to be on the spot, but what is the story? Commuting, how did that happen? 
Like, did you talk to somebody next to you on the bus? No, there was um, there was a protest going on, you know, and I wasn't in Berkeley, but uh, I guess other places have protests too. And people were saying, make the company that dumped the pollutant in this river, clean it up. And that seemed normal. But what was interesting to me was there was a counter protest saying, yeah, we'd love to, but we'd actually make it worse. We don't understand how to clean up pollution in a river. And I said, what do you mean? That's just, that's just, you know, you're trying to sneak out of your thing. And then I looked into it and there was genuine concern from all sides about whether we knew well enough how to pull a pollutant out of the river. And so a problem that I thought had been solved years ago was actually an area of active research, which is now my area of active research. And so thanks to those protesters for showing me um, a big question mark that a scientist could answer. Thanks for sharing that. All right, I'm going to the last poll for now. Uh, and at, at least I don't know if you wanna go ahead and ask uh, this one as well. Sure. Um, so we would also love to know what is most important um, to you or what do you think is the most important in finding the right job or career? Is it luck or a lot of trial and error, research and planning? You know, what does it take? What does it take to find the right job or the right career for you? Uh, I want to thank everybody for being so participatory. We haven't used a lot of uh, polls this semester, so so this is fantastic. Um, one of the things that we've heard like, a number of people say, including um, the woman who basically started Mozilla, uh, was that luck played a big role. So it's interesting that you all had mentioned luck as well and about, uh, well, giving away the poll, about a quarter of people um, are also thinking that luck plays a role. Any surprises for you all here? Yeah, I, for, for, for me it is. Um, I, I'm, I'm very happy to see that so many people see that strong network, knowing the right people, because that is, um, you know, maybe to give it away, some of the things we're gonna be talking about, but I think that is just so important to, to have that, that connection. So it's again, great to see 68% see, say that's important. Yeah, and I'll just say, it's definitely like what is most important. Like, obviously all these things play into it, but um, but yeah, it's really interesting to see, you know, what you all think is most important. And yeah, I echo what Lynn said. Um, I think it'll be really interesting as we're going along to, um, I'm just gonna stop the share for just a moment, um, to hear what you all have to say about networking and how we do that, because you all are both engineers. Um, Evan is also an engineer. and to paint an like with an extremely broad stroke, I think people are like, oh, it's the people who are the business people who get to know people and know the right people. And um, people who are engineers maybe feel like that's not the case. So I'm hoping that you'll set the record straight for us. Um, all right, well, let me start my share again because um, as I was thinking about today and, and looking at um, your backgrounds, I noticed something interesting and I thought it'd be an interesting place to start. We, we talked about LinkedIn a little bit, and Lynn, I looked at your LinkedIn, and I'm pretty sure on that LinkedIn, you have um, this this trademarked uh, quote, I, and maybe you could say it for us. Sure, sure. It, it's, um, I dreamed of a better way to help students, professionals discover career shape in the future. Um, and we actually trademarked was that discover career shape in the future, which is really what we think of STEM. It's another way of saying STEM, it's those career shape in the future. And, um, and I can maybe just give you some, I mean, I, I was actually surprised when I saw that quote, I was like, geez, when, when did I say that? <laughs> and, and saw that it was quite a, a while ago, it was um, you know, several years ago. And as we're gonna talk tonight, you know, we've had a lot of pivots since I wrote that quote, we've had a lot of pivots, but I think this desire to help people, you know, discover that right career for them, has, has really remained the same. Um, you know, so, so why that's important? Why, why did I put that in, on my LinkedIn? You know, one of the most important decisions you're gonna make um, and any decision a person makes is about what career they're gonna do. And if you ask a college student for advice on how to make the right career decision, um, often what they're gonna be told is, you're gonna be told is to get an internship, which is probably why 60% of you or so had, have been able to get an internship, I guess 58% 
got a, got an internship because it is so important. And it's great advice. It's the same great advice I got when I started out about, about 30 years ago. Um, but getting an internship really only helps you if, if, first of all, if you get an internship in an area that you're interested in. Um, sounds like Evan got really lucky. He, he found an internship in an area that, that has been in his career he was interested in. But a lot of people might not know what they're interested in, so you can't get an internship. And then you got to be able to actually find an internship in, in that area. Um, so that's really kind of... Um, how it relates to Repicture is Elisa and I, like we talked about, we're civil engineers. I was a really happy civil engineer. I love the work I was doing, but I really wasn't happy with the lack of diversity in civil engineering. Um, and so I kind of was thinking and talked to Elisa, we did a lot of research and just how can we get more people interested in, in, in engineering? And so they can kind of discover that, that career that's of interest to that. So that's kind of how we started started our journey that, that we've been doing. And like Evan talked about, we started with a company called I Look Like a Civil Engineer. And um, our goal was to help people understand the great work of civil engineers. I'm glad that Evan realized that, you know, the people that, that were protecting their streams were civil engineers, along with all the other professions. And so um, we created a website. We, one of the first things we did is actually our first paying company, um, company paid us is to actually help um, spread the word about what civil engineers do. So this is actually a picture of a program we did with a company where they wanted to do some outreach to the local community. And we basically helped the kids. We gave them a, showed them a picture of, of what engineers did. And we just um, said the, the company employees just really enjoyed working with the students and, and showing them this is what engineers are. So, so really everything we've done, although since we've pivoted a lot from this, it's all been about how do we help people, you know, discover that the career that's right for them? I think it's interesting that you pivoted, but it's always been called Repicture. Is that correct? No, it actually started with I Look Like a Civil Engineer. So we actually, we had a company that we started called I Look Like a Civil Engineer. Um, it was an LLC. And we decided that was, it was too limiting. You know, we didn't want to stick only to civil engineering. And um, as you can probably tell from our logo, we did not have a professional um, designer logo. <laughs> so we, we actually pivoted from I look like civil engineer to, to repicture. Oh, that's interesting. And one of the students asks, and I think it's a good question, you mentioned something that you felt like there wasn't a lot of diversity in civil engineering. I think you said civil engineering. Um, can you just explain what you mean by diversity? Uh, Alina yeah. asks that question. Sure, sure. Um, to or be honest, lack of I, diversity. Yeah, Excuse lack me. of diversity, yeah. And to be honest, when we started, it was a, a gender thing just because Elisa and I had seen something about, about women in, in engineering. And I think it's about 12% of, of engineers are women. We realize it's really not just a, a gender issue. Um, it's all kinds of, of, of issues as far as diversity. So we are interested in helping all different types, whether it's, it's race, gender, hobbies. I think we all could... We all could benefit by having more creative people, more artists, um, you know, consider engineering. Um, so um, it's really, it's, it's all different types of, of thoughts because really, you know, communities are designed by civil engineers. And I think having those, those um, diversity of experiences, experiences and thoughts and things like that can help us. So we're, again, we started out as gender, but we realized that was way too narrow and we've really um, diversified into just, just all different types of backgrounds. Um, what I think might be helpful, I'm realizing that we're talking about Repicture and how you all started, but can you talk about what you're doing actually right now? And maybe we can go backwards a little bit from that. Sure, Lisa, do you wanna start? Yeah, sure. Um, so yeah, we started out you know, with this like, I look like a uh, civil engineer really just wanting to show images of you know who's an engineer and and it really evolved from there and and images of who they are but also like um you know what they do and things like that um so really the inspiration that made repicture make look more like what it is today really came out of research that Lynn had done that showed that you know by and large people don't really know what engineering or STEM is and even though it's like this really intimate part of our, all of our lives. And um, so we actually, um, you know, our platform came out of, you know, this idea that, uh, you know, 
like it's it's in everything it's in every everywhere we go um in our lives like so um and you know and how can we make these careers you know shaping our world and the future feel relevant and and accessible so sort of the evolution was then we had this idea for the this platform that showcases what engineers do and kind of like behind the scenes of who is involved in these projects and what they are and like what what engineers and STEM professionals are doing. And then today, now we are, um, well, we're going ahead, but we um, have basically gotten into helping students um, with career exploration and with building their resume. And we use our platform to do that. And we've really created a way to help you do all of these things that we want to be doing anyways, like practicing your writing and presentation skills and digging a little deeper and learning about and exploring careers um, while you're networking with professionals. And um, at the end of the day, you can show it all off. So you're building like sort of a um, unique portfolio of work. Um, and how we do that is we give you like a structure, a framework that allows you to build um, a portfolio of work. And uh, basically by researching and publishing articles on our platform about real world STEM projects. And in the meantime, telling your story and we kind of tie that all in together throughout the program. So um, yeah, that's kind of in the last couple of summers, it, it developed over the last couple of summers. So uh, last summer um, was the first, or not this summer, but the last summer was the first program that we did. And then this summer we did it again, and kind of, you know, expanded on what we created the summer before. What are some of the metrics that you use? I mean, to kind of see that you're making progress. I did not ask you this originally, but I feel like I know you can answer this. Yeah, and, and I think one of the ways, I mean, there's kind of the standard, you know, as far as, you know, visits to the website and, and things like that, but we really want to make an impact. It's so we're, um, for the summer program, we're basically, Lisa said, we're actually helping students career exploration and, and build their resumes. And so what our impact right now is helping students and basically after the end of the, the program, we basically ask students, you know, the two types of things we're trying to get convinced with them is do they real did they find a career that they're interested in and do they have better information for, for a resume? And so on the resume end, we've actually done a survey to hiring managers where we had them look at the resume with and without the repicture program and the profile Lisa talked about, you're actually developing a profile and it's basically a portfolio of work. You know, artists have their portfolios that they go to a job and they can, you know, bring out their pictures and stuff like that. Well, this is actually an opportunity to get a portfolio of this is the work I did this summer in this technical area. And we had actually 100% of managers rated a resume for the students that participate in our program higher than the resume without. Um, so those are the types of ways that we're actually measuring success is really having an impact. Um, I was excited, you know, when I talked to, you know, past students, when I talked to them and they say, yeah, I got my job because of um, my picture profile, or I discovered it might be at a, uh, we've had some students that they've been studying um, for maybe four years in their topic, but really didn't know what area they wanted to specialize in. And through our program, it really helped them solidify, okay, this is the area I want to go into. Um, you know, that's how we're really measuring success is really that impact. But we also have the metrics that are standard metrics as far as visits to the site and, and um, number of students impacted, things like that. So students in the audience, if they want to find you, uh, they want some help, um, I, we have questions on, um, uh, you know, resume flaws and, and different things, but how, what, what, what do they have to, what do they do? They go to the site, they. Yeah, so, so we're encouraging right now, we're actually starting to get ready for our next summer program. Um, so there, there are two ways you can use it. One is you get on your own, you can explore. So if you're trying to figure out, it, it sounds like we have a number of, of STEM professionals or some students on there. So if you're wondering, you know, what is the actual work of a civil engineer, right? And it may be if you're not civil engineer, you think, oh, they all do the same thing. Well, you can actually go into transportation, you can go into structures, you can go into water. And so one of the things you can do is go on our site and just explore your different career options. Um, the other thing that we're actually getting ready for is this summer's summer program. And so if you're interested in really being part of a program, 
that you can put on your resume, you can um, compete in contests, you can network with professionals, you can basically sign up for our, our summer program and uh, participate in that also. So really kind of that two way. One is you can use the site just on your own to explore, or you can basically boy, be part of summer program where we kind of help you through that exploration process, improve your skills, put something you know concrete you can put on your resume. One of the things, um, you know, talking about new ventures, entrepreneurship, uh, we started the semester hearing um, from a woman who basically is trying to save our um, uh, marine marine life uh, and protect marine. And, and that's kind of a noble goal. And we've certainly heard from others who are a little bit more financially oriented. And I, people, as they're thinking about a new, new venture or, or venture capital, they're wondering like, well, where's the money? So I am wondering if you can talk a little bit about the business model because it sounds wonderful. But I'm wondering how, what the business model is, and, and where's the money? Yeah, so I'll start that one off. Um, my, we're we're basically a two-sided marketplace, um, and we're serving users like our users are our students, and um, you know, just anyone really of any age or background that is interested in learning about the world of STEM and what they can do in the world of STEM, and really i want to emphasize like any background because stem is everything right like you can be an artist and be involved in stem projects so stem is not only involves like every possible person with every background but it also touches literally every part of our lives so it's, it's very relevant um to look at stem fields and stem fields are some of the fastest growing and are you know the careers building the future shaping the future like we have talked about um so, but on the other side, you know, we ultimately want, I mean, we, we've had this mission from day one, which is to make those careers accessible. Um, so we never really envisioned having those users be, be, be our like paying customers, basically. We always wanted to make the platform like free or very accessible. So this coming summer, we are going to introduce a fee for the program, but we're going to keep it like as low as possible and offer plenty of scholarships so that Basically, anyone that really wants to do it can do it. Um, and we're really doing the fee to like cover our expenses for the most part at this point. We're not really trying to make that a big revenue at this point. Um, what we really see is our revenue is the other side of the marketplace, which is companies looking for staff. And, um, and that's where we see, um, you know, where, where we see our revenue coming from. And I think, um, yeah, Lynn can talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, so 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 um, so all of the pre-pandemic, all of our market research we did was specifically with with companies, engineering companies, and pre-pandemic, um, and it's starting again now. But companies had a real hard time attracting and hiring technical staff, um, and so what we were doing pre-pandemic is really working with companies that were trying to especially those small to mid-sized companies. So big companies, they can go to all kinds of career fairs. They can put out ads in, in magazines and stuff like that. Those small companies, especially, and maybe some mid-sized companies, they really have a hard time getting students to know about them and getting to students to know about the, the work they're doing. So that was all the, um, our, our, our revenue plan. It would, we basically in 2019, um, early 2020, we're starting to really make some good um, headway in that with companies that really just, you know, wanted to, to, to track staff um, because they're having a hard time. Pandemic hit and those companies that we were, that were hiring and couldn't, or couldn't find enough staff to hire, pandemic hit and they basically stopped all hiring. Um, and actually a lot of them started talking about laying off staff. So that's where we actually pivoted, you know, to these students. We found a real niche um, for a student summer program. We really enjoyed it. But ultimately, we're going to go back to that Revan model where basically companies, what's really unique right now is, is companies, especially the small and mid-sized companies, can't get the word out about the actual projects you would work on. And even some of the larger companies we've talked to are really interested in helping you understand when you're getting a job, it's not just a general job description, but this is a specific project or you know type of project that you'll work on. And I think it's a really unique opportunity that you know we're excited about. We hope in the future, 
everyone basically looks at if you want it, if you know what you want to do or you're not sure you want to do, you want to see actually what projects you work on, not just some generic job description. You can basically go to our site and see these are the types of jobs that you'll be working on and, and find a, a job hopefully that fits what you're looking for. Yeah, and I'll just add one thing to that, which is I think um, being able to just focus on the students and add creating and adding value for them brings us in closer alignment with like our mission and what we want to do. So it feels like a very natural thing for us to be doing. Like, I have to say that when we were in the mode of going after companies, it did feel like a step removed from where we really wanted to be focusing our time, which is mm -hmm. helping students learn about careers and grow their, you know, like kind of expand their mind and open their mind of the possibilities. There's just so many infinite possibilities out there. And I think we, got really excited with our summer program because it has allowed us a way to really use our, our platform in a very unique way where it allows the students, like it gives a structure basically for the students to then explore. Like I think part of the, what makes it hard to explore careers is there's just so much out there. And so I think we're like, this pivot was like a really good thing for us, even though it does mean for like, it's a longer road to revenue. <laughs> like, people talk about pivots quite a bit. Can you, can you break it apart for us a little bit? Like what happened? Uh, like, was it one day you're like, we're not, we don't like, this is not working. Or, I mean, I'm sure that the pandemic was quite helpful in pushing the pivot, but can you talk a little bit about when you knew it was the right time to make a pivot? And what happened? Can I start that, Lynn, and then pass sure. it to you? When the pandemic hit, uh, you know, not only did all the companies stop hiring, uh, but I have two young boys and they were suddenly home like all of the time. So, um, and we didn't have any help. So it, the pivot was out of necessity. And Lynn had the brilliant idea of, uh, basically, you know, I mean, helping companies wasn't really an option. And she had the idea that we could help students that had lost internships and job opportunities because, because of COVID. We'd been hearing that, that all these students had lost, you know, their, their job opportunities. So I'll let Lynn take it from there because she really right. spearheaded that whole program. And like, when I was unable to work, then was working like probably 80 hours a week or 90, you know, some obscene amount of hours to make our first pro program happen. So it's kind of, yeah. Yeah, and, and I think we've experienced both types of pivots. We had some pivots that were very gradual um, to go from, from civil engineering to engineering to STEM. Um, that was more of a gradual, you know, talking to people, well, civil engineering only didn't make sense, engineering only didn't make sense. So, you know, that's more of a gradual, just talking to people. But at least said our big pivot to students was literally we had, made a commitment to, to, to hire three interns and um, for, for the summer. And originally they were gonna be helping us with the company outreach. There was no company outreach available to happen at that time. And we literally on their first day, I said, okay, we, our original plan for the summer, is it gonna happen? Our target audience is STEM students, your STEM students, what's your biggest concern? And we basically spent a, a week, actually it's three days, just brainstorming what their biggest concerns are, how we could best help them, how it ties into this. And really, um, I think it, it ended up making a lot of sense for us to, to, to be really tying this into, into the summer program and to address their, you know, what they said their biggest fear was they, they couldn't get an internship. So I'm not going to know what kind of job I want, and I'm not going to be able to get a job. And so we really wanted to address both of those of how do we substitute for those students that can't, can't get an internship in their area, but need it, um, especially to get future jobs, what we can do to, to help them. I, I think that's great. One of the things that you'd use the word was a public benefit co corporation. You're a public benefit corporation. Can you explain what that means? Sure. Um, so Public Benefit Corporation, it's a new, relatively new type of corporation. I think it's been out there about 20 years or so. And it's a mission-driven for-profit um, company. 
And so what it's saying to the public, um, to the world is our mission is very important to us. Mm -hmm. um, we're still for profit, but um, it's basically saying the mission is, is equal important as, as a profit for us. So we decided when we, that was one of our, another one of our pivots. We did not start, I look like a civil engineer was not a, a public benefit corporation, but when we pivoted to, to, to repicture, we thought it was important to not just say that we wanna do good, but to basically commit to it, that we have to, every two years, we have to submit a report or create a report that explains how we were doing good as a company. So we thought that was important to, to, um, to make that a public statement that, that that's what we're doing. It's quite refreshing. Um, I have two slides that I feel like I should share uh, about uh, things on Repicture, and I'm hoping that you can help um, explain what we are looking at on these slides. Uh, the first one is company names, and the second one I think is more about the program. So tell me if I should share this or the next one. Um, and actually, maybe the, the previous one might be a little little better. Um, no, okay, I'm sorry. It is the next one, that one there. And, and that, oh, this one? The next yes. one, no, the next one, yeah. That is just showing, that's obviously me and Elisa, um, but that's a type of pictures we're actually trying to put on our site because we're um, asking uh -huh. people to repicture their careers, repicture engineering, pre-picture STEM, and we want to show that human side. You, you talked about LinkedIn should be a professional picture, definitely. What we're trying to do is also show the human side of, of scientists, engineers, and, and professionals. So one of the things we're doing with three pictures, really telling their stories. Um, I remember recently I was talking to a high school, a junior high school um, uh, woman, and she looked at our site and she read some of the stories and she saw some of the hobbies. And she said to me, I can't believe I have the same hobby as an engineer. Because <laughs> in her mind, she can't, you know, she couldn't relate to engineers. So things we're trying to do on our sites is just get it so, so people relate to us. Um, yeah, they're they're great pictures. Elisa, that's your two boys are, are in the buggy in the back. And and uh, Lynn, I guess you're on the Potomac. Is that right? You, you bet it. You got it. <laughs> that's fantastic. Uh, that I'm so glad you brought that up. Then I will fast forward to here. Yeah. And that's just, these are the companies. Um, it's a boring slide. We can go, go quicker on it. But just for our, our journey, you know, these were the companies that we were talking to prior to pandemic. You know, we found a number of progressive companies that were supportive of what we're doing. Um, again, pandemic happened and a number of them stopped, stopped hiring, but that was kind of our, our traction pre-pandemic. Pre, uh, Which led to, I think here, the Resume Builder Program. Exactly. And I think you all were clever enough to do, uh, to kind of show, um, I don't know if one of you wants to kind of walk through the different blocks that are coming up. Yeah, so we talked about it a little bit before, but basically with our summer program, we use this concept of like looking at, well, we provide you like a structure for, for exploring careers. And part of that structure or like sort of like a base core piece of that structure is like helping you build your repicture portfolio. And what that looks like is looking out there and saying, what am I interested in? And finding a project that is in the realm of something you're interested in and really digging in to that project and learning about it and writing about it and um, publishing, you know, an article about it on, on repicture. And what that does is for you, like you get a, much deeper kind of understanding of what you might do in that career, just because, you know, it's different to just read, like, this is what a civil engineer does. Like they build bridges, they do this, right? But like to actually look at a project, see how a team comes together to make it happen, see all the different types of people that come together to make it happen. Um, you know, see things like you might not think about, but like, how is the project funded? And, and those are the things that really matter when you go out and you get a job. Um, you know, those things really impact your job and like how you do it. Um, so it, we're really trying to help you get a little bit of context and to really get a deeper understanding of what, you know, what career paths you're considering. Um, and, you know, you don't have to necessarily know what you're doing, just pick something that interests you and we kind of help you with that. And in the process, we help you with your writing skills. We help you with your technical writing skills. 
um, we help you, uh, you know, we had our students gave presentations on their on their projects. So you get an opportunity to present your project to peers and then also to professionals. So we like arranged for our students to be able to present their projects um, to professionals, which is just, uh, you know, it's an opportunity. It's a really, um, a really great opportunity, I think. Um, and then all the while, you're getting lots of opportunities to network with your peers, with other people that might open your eyes to different ideas that you hadn't thought about. And with professionals, we had panel discussions with professionals and things like that. And then at the end of the day, um, you have this portfolio that you can showcase, um, which you know can say a lot about you. Like if you are, you know, maybe if you haven't been fortunate enough to find a, a, a internship in the exact area you want, or you know, you're a business major and you're interested in green energy or something like that it's kind of a way to express your interest in something without like actually doing it and then also to show that you know a little bit like you've taken the time to learn a little bit more about it and, and do something about it so you have this port you know portfolio that you can use it's a sample of your writing a sample of your presentation skills and um you can also say you've done our program which is a great add to your resume so um yeah it's that's kind of the overview I I think this picture kind of says so much uh, and brings so much together what both of you have been saying, um, working with different people, seeing them kind of living their lives and uh, being successful. So I'll just I'll leave this up for just a moment. Um, one thing that you all do all the time, and if people haven't picked up on it yet, uh, both Elisa and Lynn are constantly doing research and talking to people. And we have a couple more poll questions that I think speaks to doing that and taking this opportunity to talk a little bit to you. And then after that, uh, I, we'll take a step back and figure out how you all even came together, uh, uh, how you all met uh, on your journey. So I'll go ahead and go to... Oh, well, maybe not almost to poll questions. I think we talked about the resume builder a little bit. Yeah, and this was kind of that that metrics. You asked us how we're doing metrics in addition yeah. to the traditional ones. You know, we want to have the managers that are um, basically students that go through our program. You know, we want them more apt to be hired. And then we obviously, like everyone, does a survey of our students after the program. And we're yeah. quite excited that 100% said they would recommend the program. Um, I think that it's interesting, this talking to people, whether you're doing a poll or whether you're constantly talking to the, the students that you're working with and the companies, it just helps build your ecosystem and and, uh, and it gives you so many more opportunities. So uh, um, here is a question that um, if you out there were to join one of the programs, uh, I think you all are wondering what would be the best format? Asynchronous? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, maybe I can put some of this in a little context. So, so what we've done the last two summers is a basically six week program similar to just a class like you take it at, at school. Um, and we're actually considering rather than forcing everyone to kind of have that same schedule that you know the assignments are all due on the same day type thing. Should we do something asynchronous where you can basically do the program at your whatever schedule you want so rather than the four six week schedule where everything's due at the same time. It could take all summer, you know, to go through the, the, the schedule or the, the class. So we're just kind of curious, would people be interested in the asynchronous where if you did a class, you could basically do it at your own pace. You'd be interested in something where it's synchronous, where basically where you basically go along, some type of mix of two. You want cohorts to work with. We just exactly we we'll, we'll figure we take this opportunity to do a little little research. Uh, I think it's perfect because if you are starting a new venture, that's what you have to do all the time. Talk to the customer. Uh, so it, actually 44% like the mix of async and sync. I think that's interesting. Yeah. So uh, that is one, one data point right there. Uh, it's interesting. I don't even, maybe you all uh, certainly knew this word, but it's like asynchronous seems to be suddenly a new word that I never ever thought I would use. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, world's my, changing. <laughs> yeah. And now, let me, uh, speaking of asynchronous, I can't seem to do two things at one time. Uh, so the next question um, would one of you all read the question out loud? Yeah. So, 
uh, we are, you know, this last summer, we had a lot of success doing these sort of um, like themed weeks and um, showing, you know, that what all the different types of things you could do in different areas. So we're wondering what, what kind of topics sound like your kind of thing or something you would be interested in, in us covering in our, in our programs next summer. It's interesting because some of these things seem like they could, would have been Evan's kind of thing. Definitely. And they're, they're all, all of our things really. Like we probably all care about all of these things on some level. Um, there might even be a career, a right career for you in each of these categories. I, I would be willing to bet there would be. <laughs> so they're pretty uh, broad, but yeah. Let me share the results. I, I also have to say in, in a couple of these polls, I put none yet. Uh, and that's because I talked to an entrepreneur last week and she said, instead of saying no, she's saying not yet. <laughs> so uh, there you go. Uh, and oop, let me share those results again, forgive me. Uh, interesting. Yeah, and I think luckily it lines well with where careers are available, right? I mean, climate change, it has been so many additional jobs in that area. All right. And that, I have one more poll after this, but I thought maybe you all might want to speak about the Tree of Life. Do you want to cover this, Lisa? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I, I can I can talk about it. And, and what we're trying to do here is, and, and again, we really appreciate you guys are helping us, um, you know, figure out, um, you know, where we're going next and where we're doing things. And one of the things that we're looking about, we had talked about the fact that kind of what was unique about our site is you can potentially actually see actual jobs that that you could be be working on. Um, and that's really our vision is eventually we want to, to be able to you know, do that. Right now, we basically have, we have um, looking at, you know, would students be interested in, um, whether it's volunteer opera, um, operations or it's actual jobs, projects that you could work on, would you be interested in kind of finding out whether or not, um, you know, what types of projects you could actually volunteer for or actually have a paid job for based on the, the actual project versus the general descriptions that you typically get. So for something like the Tree of Life, it's actually a volunteer opportunity we currently have out there where they're looking for a wide range of, of, of people. It's really just an example of, um, this is actually a project that's really interesting. That's why I put it up there. It's actually an art project, a living art project that's gonna um, really help you as you go up the Tree of Life, you can um, understand the connection of people and art and environment and things like that. But the real concept is if rather than getting these generic job descriptions that say, you know, you've worked with this, you know, company, if you could actually be finding out about this is a project that you work on or example of a project you work on, is that something, I think we're gonna have the next question to basically say, is this something that you would possibly be interested in? Um, this is just one example of a project, but really what we're trying to figure out is there students interested in learning about volunteer opportunities and even, you know, paying opportunities where you can basically gain that experience or you can get that, that job. Um, so just trying to get some, some ideas about interest in and learning about jobs through projects versus learning about jobs about generic information or generic things that you would do. Uh, so I, I went ahead and put that poll up. Of course, you know, that Tree of Life does look like a Burning Man project, immediately makes it seem fascinating. Yes. It is, in yeah. fact, a Burning Man project. Oh, there yeah. you go. <laughs> who doesn't Who doesn't want to sign me up? Yeah, exactly. Lynn and yeah. I, if nobody else volunteers, we're going to do this, I think. Yeah. And then I think with, for this specific one, it's interesting because you actually be working with professionals, potentially working with professionals. So it's one of those things that if you're interested in and in seeing what the professionals do, how do they design structures, how do they get people to know about it, how do you integrate the art and the environment, um, could be interesting. So here, yeah, here, here are some of the results. I have to also let you all know some of these um, polls, I think I did the wording for them. So I think I'm, I'm sure I was like need to earn money. <laughs> but uh, about 30, like, you know, almost 40% signed me up, another 40% not quite sure. 
Yeah. But again, that's helpful for us because that's something, you know, we haven't, we have basically just have one or two opportunities on the site right now, but it may be it's something we want to be expanding. So I appreciate that. Um, so it's been interesting talking to you about what you're working on now. And it's it's a little bit different than what we normally do. And it's also fun, I, at least it's fun for me to kind of see how you all collaborate. And in case you all it, it didn't hear, um, Lynn is actually in Maryland and Elisa is here in Berkeley. So they're not even living in the same place. So it's kind of interesting to see how you all can can build this company. And I thought I would finally share a little bit about your journey and maybe have you all talk about that and how you came together for Repicture. So let me go ahead and share my screen again. There we go. Uh, so Lynn, I, I, I guess I, I didn't realize quite how big I put Stanford on there, but <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> on top and then Elisa last week we had someone from UC Davis also so it's okay. kind of fun so um I actually think it would be helpful to hear we also have, have been having conversations about whether it's interesting to start a new venture right when you're out of school when you should do this um but in looking at both of your journeys you actually work for quite a bit before you started repicture um Lynn since you're on top you want to talk a little bit uh first sure Sure, yeah, so I um, got a civil engineering degree, BS at Bucknell and, and master's at Stanford. And I worked for, for actually a long time at one company, but it was a company that kept on getting bought in bigger and bigger. And if you don't know AECOM at the time, it was the largest engineering company in, in the nation. Did a wide range of things, worked from a project engineer, um, office um, administrator, program manager, and things like that. And then, um, yeah, 2018. So basically 30 years into my career, I actually um, found this passion. And actually, Elisa and I, so I, Elisa and husband and I used to, to work together. I first met Elisa at a bar um, for the company happy hours. So we got to know each other. We realized we both had this kind of entrepreneur interest. And, and then this issue about diversity and, and civil engineering came up and, and kind of you know, kind of, kind of evolve from there. But as far as a question about, you know, starting a entrepreneurship or a, a venture, you know, right out of school versus 30 years, years later, you know, my advice to you would be to, to, to start your venture when you find something you're passionate about. And I, in my, in, you know, first 30 years of my career, I really did not have something that, that, that I was really passionate about because it's, it's hard and you want to basically stick with it. And, and really, um, I, I'm glad I waited 30 years because I finally found something I, I'm passionate about. So find something you're passionate about, but then also you need to make sure that you're in the situation where you can do it. And, you know, sometimes that's family issues, it's financial issues, things like that. Because I also, even if I found my passion right out of school, I probably couldn't have done it because of financial issues. Um, and that's kind of an advantage of doing it 30 years in and that I have, you know, the financial situation is a little different. Our network, my network is so much larger. Um, so I'm glad in, in my case that I waited the 30 years. But again, if you have a passion, you're young, you're able to do it, um, you know, that, that, that's the right for you, you know, versus for me, it was definitely 30 years. That's great. Elisa? Yeah, I'm going to skip my timeline just to echo it first to just echo what Lynn said it's I wholeheartedly agree I don't think there is really a best or right time it's just right the right time for you um and like really that right time is when you like find something that you're really passionate about um because it is like it can be really hard <laughs> like it can be a lot of work and I mean yeah, I, and then and typically, I mean, as we've gone along, we've learned a lot more about how businesses start up and have learned that, you know, it takes a lot longer than people think. It's five to seven years is not uncommon for you to get your, you know, launch a business, you know, kind of get it off the ground. Um, and then I'll, I wanted to also like go back over something that Lynn glossed over a little bit there. And that was that 
what, or just, you know, in telling the story, like skipped over a part that I think is really interesting, which is that, you know, and we talked about, we didn't really have like a business idea when we started, you know, like we just had this mission, like we wanted to do something about, you know, diversity in our little neck of the STEM world. And, um, and, you know, and, and I think we each had made space for repicture in our lives. Like Lynn, you know, she had built this incredible diverse engineering team with almost 50% women. Like she cares a lot about diversity and equity and like she walks the walk, right? Like in her office, like of a hundred engineers, she's hired hundreds of engineers, like almost 50% were women. And there was a lot more diversity than you see in a typical office. And I feel like she was kind of at, um, you know, and I talked, we talked about it earlier, like more at that, how can I help others phase of her career? And for me, like back in 2013, I took this class where I outlined, like it was through an assignment, like I outlined ideas for how I wanted to bring together industry leaders to support women in engineering. And Lynn was like at the top of my list of people I wanted to work with on that. But Lynn and I weren't even really connected at that point. I mean, we just knew of each other, like we met at a happy hour or whatever. And so when we ran into each other at this entrepreneur event, like another year later, it was like, you know, we had, we had some other idea and I actually like left my job to go pursue this other idea that we were working on. Um, when, and, and like moved my family to India and you know, it was really interesting also like that project, but like the point is like I made the space, you know? And then when I got back from like India that week, I remember I was like super jet lagged and Lynn called me up and she's like, have you heard about, I look like an engineer. Um, do you wanna work on something related to diversity and engineering? And like, we shifted to that and we've never looked back like however many years later, I won't count. Um, but yeah, it's like really important to, really care about what you're doing like i think i think of the other ideas we had when we first connected and it's like yeah none of those were gonna take us we were not gonna work on any of those like this passionately for so long <laughs> so yeah um but yeah that was kind of so of all, of all the people who've come no one has come to the foundry so far how did you get involved with the foundry and how did that help what you were doing i think you were there in 2020 yeah, that, that actually um, brings up another thing we wanted to talk about today, which is that, you know, community is so important when starting a, a business and starting a, a, you know, doing a startup. Um, you know, I think it's the same thing as with a job. Like it's, it's, it's kind of who you know and like what, what community you build is, is critical. Um, so yeah, I think, at some point I, well, connecting with Evan early on was incredibly good for us. Like we just have gotten amazing support from Evan all the way from the very, very beginning. And I think there's also like, not only will your community help you, like, I mean, if it weren't for Evan, we wouldn't be here, right? These opportunities um, come up that might not have otherwise, but you never know like how, like, you know, there's a lot of ups and downs and there have been times when Evan will like call or email and it's just like, that's just what we needed to like boost us up right now. <laughs> you know, like, it's like, what can I do to help you? And it's like, thank you, you know? Um, so yeah, community is important. And so, um, yeah, I think Evan was the one that told me about the Foundry to just go check it out and then connected with um, Kira, who runs the Foundry, and we just connect, I mean, we just hit it off and um, talked and she was like, you should apply and, you know, it just, yeah, I, I think at that point we'd already learned that community was important, so we just went for that, like, immediately and, and, and it was a really good experience, so the Foundry was, was a great um, boon for us as well. Fantastic. I have taken more time than I normally do to go through things and haven't left as much time for student questions, but I know, Roman, you've been waiting really, really patiently, and I thought we could kind of shift over uh, to some student questions. Roman, you want to come online with us? Yeah, uh, yeah, thank you, definitely. Uh, can you all hear me okay? Yes. 
Okay, perfect. First of all, this is really exciting. Uh, I'm more of the social science major that made the jump to entrepreneurship, but hearing you know all these things about the engineering field, it's really exciting that this uh, you both have came up with this idea and working it to make it you know as it is right now. Uh, one of my initial question is, you know, when you think of uh, you know different platforms, your mind automatically goes to these big you know Facebook uh, and LinkedIn and these current established uh, sort of uh, sites, and you've gone into detail how you you know, are, are different than them, you offer more services, but was there ever a time where you considered just creating an organization and uh, existing solely on those platforms instead of creating what you made today? Yeah, and, and I think, I, I, I don't know what Lisa, Lisa's saying, but what we really wanted to initially do was make it so that you could see the type of projects that you could work on. And we just don't see with, with those, so those platforms you know, doing that. Um, the other thing we've done is actually, and we haven't really had a chance to talk about today, but we've developed a, a number of lesson plans that we've provided both at the high school level and at the college level. So we have um, structural engineering classes actually used on our platform, geotechnical engineering classes, um, some introduction to engineering classes using the platform, which I don't think something like a social media, uh, LinkedIn or Facebook where they're gonna sell your information um, or so, you know, sell your user information is, is, is going to be right, you know, for using, it, you know, as part of a lesson plan. So, you know, I, I think we, you know, looked at that. I think um, we have a very distinct, what we're doing is very distinct from those platforms. And we just decided those platforms really don't, don't serve it, what we're trying to, to, to do. Yeah, and also, like, I'd say for me, I also didn't really realize I didn't really answer the question about like my journey about how I got into this, but I think in engineering, back when I was in engineering, like one of the um, things for me was like, like I, I enjoyed my career and everything. Um, I worked on some really exciting projects, but at the end of the day, I just always felt like, you know, this is not really my movie. Like, you know, I really had this desire to do something entrepreneurial, but also like, I think I really wanted to like create something. And so I don't think it ever occurred to me to like do this on another platform because like, I think, yeah, I think I just, I really like the, what I wanted to do was in, with Repicture is like create something new that hasn't existed before. And like, that could, you know, make people think about their careers in a different way or, you know, just do something that I could look at like tangibly and be like, we did that. <laughs> so that was kind of, um, yeah, I never really thought of using another platform for that. But yeah, that's that's interesting. Um, um, Rushab, who I don't think is online, it's possible that um, they're in the library and, and someone's in the background, but um, had a pretty practical question, uh, which I liked and talking about common resume flaws you've come across. Can you all talk about that a bit? Sure. Um... Geez, there, there, unfortunately, there's so many, right? <laughs> but, but I'd say some of the most common resume flaws or my, my recommendation for resumes is not tailing your resume to the position you're applying for. And, um, you know, if you, if you just have a resume that you're using for, you know, every application or you're, you're, you're not going to be doing well. So you really need to be tailing your resume to, to the specific job application um, using the same exact words when possible. So many of job um, softwares now are used and if you don't really use the same exact words of what they're looking for, it's not gonna get through. So make sure you, you do that. And um, yeah, I, I, I would suggest, and there are a lot of organizations that will review your resume for with you. Um, I know I just last week volunteered at the American Civil Engineers where I basically reviewed a number of college students to get their feedback. So definitely take advantage of, you know, your career center, having them review that resume um, and they can give you specific comments on, on your resumes. Um, Rushab is actually joining us right now. Uh, so uh, by the beauty of, you know, fingers, um, do you have any fo follow-up question on that? Yeah, I, I, I think it might be a really long one though. Um, but just like, could you give me like a small example of probably like a way, let's say I'm applying to like a specific company. Um, I don't really know which example company I would talk about, but. Um, who, who are you interested in? 
a, a, any companies that okay, uh, Apple Apple let's because I'm looking at Apple um if I was applying to Apple for let's say a mechanical engineering role um and like mechanical engineers work on like designing their product um what how 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 specifically would I like you know like what kinds of things would you, would would I try and include in my resume um that would be different to like applying for like a mechanical engineering role at like um a civil engineering manufacturing company yeah. um if you know what i mean yep yeah no no that's, that's great um my, my first response would be actually unrelated to, to what we're doing but you should not just cold email or send in your your resume or apply to an, a, a, a position you really should use your network to, to find someone at apple to, to talk to so they can give you some specific advice you know to, to the apple um what you really want to do is kind of um you know tell your resume to that and to kind of tie it to our summer program and what we're doing so i encourage you to, to, to use our site is if you're looking for a mechanical engineer in it at, at apple that is doing this specific software development related to you know whatever they're hiring for um, what you could do on our site is basically do research on that type of of project and add it to 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 our site um, and, and to basically show them that so Again, I think I meant um, there's a lady, uh, Tayden, who's a biology major, and she was interested in doing um, research on different types of, it was actually human biology, um, viruses and things like that. So what she did is she actually researched a number of projects about, you know, um, about um, um, viruses, you know, in humans. She wrote those summaries, put them on our website, and then on her resume, she's able to say, because she never was able to get an internship. This is between her junior and senior year that she worked on that. She couldn't get her internship. But what she was able to do was say, I spent the summer researching, you know, viruses, you know, type things. You can see the work I did at this URL. And the company, when she got, she got hired. And first day, you know, they asked her, you know, she asked them, you know, why, why did you hire us? And it said, because you've done, you've actually took the time to, to research this area that that you know we're we hired you for and we could see the quality of the work that you did you know we can see your your actual product so you know that's the type of thing that we're trying to have people use with repicture you don't have to use our summer program you could actually just do it on your own but it's really a way if you're looking for a job at apple doing you know programming well this is a way to basically show them you have those those abilities even if maybe you don't have another job in that area so yeah. it'd be kind of like crafting like the work you're doing for the specific role that you want to work in. Okay. Yeah. So if you know Thank exactly, you. if you know what area you want to work in, yeah, you wanna you wanna post projects, you know, regarding or post articles regarding that. Right. Um, the other opportunity is if you've actually done, you might have done like a class project that would be applicable to this. And you could actually put that on your profile also. So you can actually show, hey, here's actually uh you know more detail because you know on a resume you can only put what two or three lines about a, something you've worked on you can actually say if you want more information here's an opportunity to get from our profile again when we did a, a survey of managers about 80 percent of the managers said yeah, if a student provided um a link you know to to their profile that 80 percent of the managers said yeah i'd probably click it so it's really an opportunity to get more information that's going to fit on on your actual resume yeah and just one other detail like so Lynn was saying you could upload projects that you're interested in and research about and you just publish them on our site. Those are linked to your profile on our site. So when you go to like you, you wouldn't necessarily just send a link to the project that you uploaded, but you would send a link to your profile and all those projects would show up on do show up on your profile, including ones you've worked on, like in your classes and, you know, all the details you want to share about that. And also, um, you know, just kind of interest projects, projects that you took the time to learn more about. Um, I think one thing that's incredibly important also, um, Rushab, first of all, thank you for asking that question. And sometimes to asking such a particular question is it's A, it's pretty brave, um, but B, it applies to everybody. Everybody's interested in figuring things out. And um, the soft skills for an engineer are incredibly important. Uh, how you communicate, how you tell a story, 
and it's not something you're necessarily taught in class. You're probably an incredible, you know, coder, but explaining that code is hard. And this is a way that you can do that. Um, the other thing, Lynn, is that you mentioned networking and that it would be helpful for um, anybody to, let's just say you're interested in Apple, to find somebody at Apple that you can talk to. Any recommendations? I have some thoughts on it, but any recommendations on how to do that in a comfortable way? Yeah, so so we actually spend, again, we had a six week program. We actually, because the networking is so important, we actually spent a week on this specific topic of, of networking and basically give hints about networking and, and things like that. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think to condense on a week down to, at <laughs> least like, you have an idea. Well, about one a week one thing it. I was gonna share on that is like, but I was talking about how we give you the structure to be able to like do these things that you want to do and know you should do, but you don't necessarily, I mean, it's just like so big, right? Um, and I think one of those is like a number of students this summer said, you know what, it was great, like, thank you, because you gave me a good excuse or a good like vehicle for reaching out to a professional that I didn't know. Because what we did is we, um, during that networking week, we had everyone like reach out to a professional, whether it's through their network or blindly, um, you know, somebody they didn't know, and they could use their repicture portfolio to show, you know, like, I am really interested in this area of work that you do. And I'm part of this program, and we are supposed to reach out to professionals. So it's like something, you know, it's like that structure that you needed. And like, some of the students were like, I would have no, like now I know that I can how I can reach out to a professional on my own, but it was great to be like I was part of this program and my assignment is to reach out to a professional like so we're we're kind of trying to create like these creative ways that um, help you and push you to do that like we, your assignment is due on Sunday and you have to reach out to a professional like you can't put it off like it's due so um, so yeah and then and then I think like you can take that with you because you know, even if you're not part of the program, you now know, like, here is a way I can build a portfolio that says, that expresses that I'm genuinely interested in this topic, so that when I reach out to a professional, which I now know how to do, because you took our program and you heard all these great teach tips about how to reach out to professionals, you can be like, and I really want to talk to you, you know, um, they might be a lot more likely to listen and, and respond. So my tip always um, is, I think it's a Ben Franklin quote, like, if you want a friend for life, ask for help. People really want to help. And it's some a comfortable thing to say, hey, I'm working on a project. Um, I heard that maybe you're working on something similar at Apple, can you help me? Um, everybody that you know at Cal, by the way, has a lot of connections. Um, I, I teach a program where we have a lot of uh, engineers from Apple at that program. Um, I say this at the risk of everybody contacting me somehow, but that's okay also. But it, when if I connect somebody to somebody else, I won't just do it generally. But if you tell me that you're working on a project and somebody you think this person can help you, then that helps me make a better connection. So um, people love helping others. Um, and and uh, Lynn and Alyssa, you're helping so much. Uh, we have one more question, I think, from Sarah. And uh, I think it's a nice way to kind of wrap things up. Rushab, thank you for your question, Sarah. And, and please correct my pronunciation. Thanks, Sarah. It was very close, though. Um, thanks, Lynn and Alicia, for joining us tonight. I was one of the things that you mentioned was how, Lynn, you had hired a team that was 50% female engineers. And I'm wondering if you ever faced any pushback of that, or if you ever had a situation where someone was like, hey, like, it's so great that you're hiring so many women, but like, my nephew really needs a job. Um, and so how do you kind of push back against that and how are you able to stay true to your values during that time? Yeah, and and um, and actually, to be honest, when Lisa, you know, mentioned I hired 50% of women, um, it was not, we went out to hire women, right? What we did is we went out to hire the best people. And what we also did is we treated our people well. And I think what you find, especially, and, and this is, I have no research to say it, just my experience being a manager, if you treat your any employee well, but especially women well, they're apt to stay with you. Um, versus men, I think you obviously you know making a general dis, um, distinction, but they often um, maybe because they're you know the financially supporting their family and stuff like that, they might be more interested in, in moving up, you know, and, and changing jobs and stuff like that. So um, 
I probably personally hired very few of those women, but I managed the group and made the, the atmosphere and the, the situation so that people felt comfortable and wanted to come here. Um, and actually, I remember one engineer that, again, I didn't hire her, but when she told me I came here because I've heard that this is really welcoming for women. Um, and so, again, it wasn't, we hired the best people. Um, often that's a man. Um, often it's, it's a woman. And that was really the things. You, have, you hire the best people, but you're going to find, and I think any minority um, underrepresented situation, often people are going to stay where they feel comfortable. And Elisa was in a different situation that she, I believe, was the only woman there, right? So they would have had, she would have had a harder time actually hiring women because they would have seen that they were the only woman there versus we had a welcoming for, for everyone. So, so again, hire the best person. If your nephew is the best qualified, we will hire your, your nephew. Um, and what we're going to do is make sure everyone feels, feels welcome, um, you know, regardless of, of what their gender, race, you know, th things is. So it was not a conscious decision to, to, to make the group 50-50. And I can 100% attest to what Lynn is saying, because also I think you'll find in any field you go into, like there's a lot of niche niches and um, in any field, like it's just a small world. Everyone knew about, knew about you know, it seems like everyone knew about um, Lynn's office, Lynn's ACOM office. And I mean, I always wanted to work there. Like the only reason I didn't want, didn't actually apply there is it's too far away. But yeah, like where I worked, it was like, I was often the only woman and, you know, never felt like people really understood um, my perspective. I mean, it, I don't know, like, it's just a really different, like I had a good experience, but it was just really different than the kind of culture that Lynn cultivated at her office, which just immediately you felt welcome and part of the group and equal and, and stuff like that. So. And again, I think the men felt uh, included also. Yes, 100 <laughs> because my husband worked for Lynn and he loved working for Lynn too, so. <laughs> uh, I yeah. think that you all are incredibly inclusive and incredibly generous. I think uh, on that note, I'm going to share and offer. Uh, Sarah, thank you so much for your question. Um, uh, if I can share my screen again here. Um, I think you have an offer for everybody to sign up for a spot. Can you see that? I'm having some issues with my computer. Sign up today to secure your spot, repicture.com forward slash students. Discount code, cleverly, capital U, capital C, capital B. Uh, and I, I really love all these pictures. I think we can all maybe see ourselves uh, in these individuals who are, who are highlighted here. Um, I am going to share also our code for the evening. But while I'm sharing that code, I have a question for both of you. And I'm hoping uh, as we round out the, the, the end of the the time together, you can kind of share something that you wish you might have um, told your 20 year old self. Uh, I think students would love to hear that. Yeah, and I guess I, I, I'll start. And I think I wish I had told my 20 year old self actually how important networking is. Um, you know, I, as an engineering student, I was very concerned about getting good grades and that's, you know, important, but I wish I had also spent more time cultivating my networking abilities and cultivating my, my network. So you all are in a unique situation. You have a great class um, in that everyone in your class um, is interested in entrepreneurs. You have no idea. They might be 20 years from now. You might actually want to connect with some of these. So, so take advantage of of the connections you can make uh, there in college. And um, don't think, you know, re really just realize that people you meet today can maybe 20, 30 years from now be really critical for your career and your happiness. So network, network, network. Yeah, I'm gonna 100% second what Lynn said. And yeah, I wish I, I mean, I, that's what I would tell my 20 years. I don't, I feel like everything kind of happens the way it happens, but, yeah, I think as an engineer, I was definitely one of those classic engineers that was like, I can do math and science and then I don't have to do the writing and the, you know, talking and speaking and like, that's, that's like 90% of it. And, and yeah, and even these fields are like, 
so much of them is um, <laughs> sorry my um, yeah like even engineering it's about it's you serve the community so it, it, you are you are community facing as even as an engineer um, so yeah. Um, speaking of engineering, I love how you have the timer going off right at 630 at the close. It's just perfect. Um, I, I want to thank Evan for introducing me to the two of you. I want to thank the two of you for, for having such wisdom to impart on the students and this incredible opportunity uh, to participate in a repicture program and what you're doing, not just for civil engineers, but uh, for STEM and the opportunities that you're offering um, to I think students young and old, that's the only diversity part I didn't see, older. Uh, but otherwise, it's just wonderful. I appreciate your, your being with us today. And uh, we look forward to following Repicture and what's going to be happening next. Yeah, thanks, thanks so much for having us. Yes, thank really you. Really enjoyed this conversation. That was wonderful.